In this example, we'll solve problems using the GCF. In part A, a fruit basket contains apples and oranges. Each basket will have the same quantity of apples and the same quantity of oranges. If there are 10 apples and 15 oranges available, how many fruit baskets can be made? How many apples and oranges are in each basket? We need to split up the fruit into groups so we can make each fruit basket. Trial and error would be difficult, so let's use the GCF to determine how many apples and oranges should be in a group. There are 10 apples. 10 is the product of 2 and 5. There are 15 oranges. 15 is the product of 3 and 5. Draw a rectangle around the fives common to each set. The GCF is 5, so 5 baskets can be made. Now determine the quantity of fruit that goes in each basket. Ten apples, divided into five baskets, gives two apples per basket. Fifteen oranges, divided into five baskets, gives three oranges per basket. Each basket has three oranges and two apples. Now we'll move on to part B. There are eight toonies and twenty loonies scattered on a table. If these coins are organized into groups, such that each group has the same quantity of toonies and the same quantity of loonies, how many groups can be made? How many loonies and toonies are in each group? Let's use the GCF to organize this. There are 20 loonies. 20 is the product of 2, 2, and 5. There are 8 toonies. 8 is the product of 2, 2, and 2. Draw rectangles around the numbers common to each set. Multiply 2 and 2 to get 4, which is the GCF. There will be four groups of coins. Twenty loonies, divided into four groups, gives five loonies per group. Eight toonies, divided into four groups, give two toonies per group. There are four groups, with five loonies and two toonies in each group. Now we'll move on to part C. A box of sugar cubes has a length of 156 millimeters, a width of 104 millimeters, and a height of 39 millimeters. What is the edge length of one sugar cube? Assume the box is completely full and the manufacturer uses sugar cubes with the largest possible volume. If a row of sugar cubes is going to fit nicely in the box, the length of the row must be 156 millimeters. Or, looking along the side of the box, a row of sugar cubes going this way would need a length of 104 millimeters. We could also look at the height to see that a stack of sugar cubes would need to be 39 millimeters high. What must the edge length of a cube be in order to produce rows that will fit the box? Well, the edge length of the cube must be a number with 156, 104, and 39 as multiples. Otherwise, rows of cubes would not fit the box. We can find this number by determining the GCF of the box dimensions. Let's find the prime factors of 156 millimeters using a factor tree.
78 and 2 are factors of 156. Thirty-nine and two are factors of seventy-eight. Three and thirteen are factors of thirty-nine. Now find the prime factors of one hundred four using a factor tree. Fifty-two and two are factors of one hundred four. 2 and 26 are factors of 52. 13 and 2 are factors of 26. 26. Now find the prime factors of 39 using a factor tree. 3 and 13 are the factors of 39. 3 and 13 are the factors of 39. From the first factor tree, we can write 156 as a product of its primes. From the second factor tree, we can write 104 as a product of its primes. Finally, we can write 39 as the product of its primes. Now we'll find the GCF. Thirteen is the only number common to all three sets. The GCF of the box dimensions is 13 millimeters, so the side length of each sugar cube is 13 millimeters.